Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video, we're going to take a look at the B450 and B550 AMD chipsets in order to decide which will be best for your next Ryzen build. To do this, we've got two boards to look at, the B450 MSI Mortar Max and the B550 MSI Mortar Wi-Fi. These are two boards in the mid-range of their respective chipset offerings, and they're fairly fully featured for M80X boards. We'll take a look at the features and look at the relative merits of them to find out if you'd be compromised with the B450 board or if you need the additional functionality of the B550 board. AMD have been using their long-standing AM4 chip socket for a long time now, right from the B350 boards and the original Ryzen CPUs. However, the chipsets have changed, meaning there's some nuances between compatibility. The B550 is the latest chipset from AMD and supports the new Ryzen 5000 Zen 3 CPUs. The B450 motherboard should get this support later, but it will be via a BIOS update, and it looks like that will reduce the functionality and the compatibility of the board by removing some of the earlier CPUs from the compatibility list. We'll have to wait and find out more when those BIOS revisions are released in January. First, let's take a look at the B450 Mortar Max. This board was a mid-range B450 board and retails at around 80 to 100 pounds in the UK and it wasn't available in North America. However, MSI have rectified that with their newer offerings and the B550 Mortar is available in North America. Looking around this board, you can see it's relatively functional in its design. It has heavy heat sinks and was praised for strong VRMs, meaning it can run powerful CPUs well and even overclock. There's a single 8-pin EPS port, four RAM slots, there are four SATA ports, and there are two M.2 drives. Also on this board we have two PCIe slots full length, and two shorter ones for add-in cards like Wi-Fi cards. The M.2 drives are PCIe 3.0, with one connecting direct to the CPU, and the other via the chipset. The PCIe slot, the main GPU slot, is also PCIe 3.0 and PCIe 4.0 is not supported on B450 motherboards. With regards to other features, they're more specific to this particular board than a general feature of the B450 chipset, but we do have sufficient fan headers, USB ports, all the general connectors you will find on a motherboard. Moving on to the B550 mortar, you can see that this board has a slightly more premium aesthetic. In terms of its features and functionality, it's still an M80X board. It still just has a single EPS 8-pin connector for power to the CPU, four RAM slots, it has some additional heat sinking on one of its two M2 slots, and this board also has six SATA ports, none of which are disabled if you do connect M.2 drives. On some ATX B450 boards, you will find that two SATA ports become inoperative when you fit an M.2 drive. There are still two PCIe full-length slots, the top one being PCIe 4.0 enabled and there are also two shorter PCIe slots for additional add-in cards. Again, the lower M.2 slot connects via the chipset and is only PCIe 3.0 enabled. The top one with a heatsink is PCIe 4.0, so you can use the modern PCIe 4.0 drives for very high transfer rates. Overall, this board is well featured. It has everything you need on a motherboard without any of the fluff that you wouldn't need for a general purpose or gaming build. Specific to this board, it also comes with heavy heat sinking around the I.O. panels and the VRMs, and an inbuilt I.O. shield, which is a nice feature to have and speeds up the build process. If we consider the BIOS of these two boards, they both use MSI's Click BIOS 5, and they look and perform identically. There's the same range of options and features to adjust, including CPU and memory overclocking adjustments. Both have ample functionality to get the maximum out of the CPUs you fit to them. Overall, you'll find far more variance between the BIOSes between different manufacturers than you will between these two chipsets. Moving on to performance, we can use an intercompatible CPU to check performance between the two, so that's what we did. We used our Ryzen 5 3600 CPU in both boards. We enabled PowerBoost Overdrive and used RAM clocked at 3600MHz CL15 with a 1 to 1 infinity fabric ratio. Those are the only performance adjustments made. We then ran a number of benchmarks. In Cinebench R20, you can see that there's minimal difference in CPU performance between the two boards. The same can be said of Firestrike and TimeSpy in 3 Mark, which are more gaming relevant. There's again almost no difference in CPU performance. Note, however, that the B450 board can't take advantage of a PCIe 4.0 graphics card, although at present we're really not reaching the limitations of PCIe 3.0 anyway, so it doesn't really gain you any additional performance for now. Verifying this with benchmarks in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 
again we see identical performance both for GPU and CPU between the two boards. Realistically then, the differences between these chipsets come down to functionality and compatibility. The functionality is the PCIe 4.0 capability of the B550 board. This allows you to connect high-speed NVMe drives with PCIe 4.0 and also, and probably more importantly for most users, PCIe 4.0 graphics cards such as the new Nvidia and AMD offerings. In particular, the new AMD 6000 series GPUs offer what AMD calls smart access memory. This improves the bandwidth between the CPU and the graphics card and allows it to access memory quicker giving a 5-10% to uplift in performance depending on game and resolutions. That's significant, and something you really want to consider if you are looking to get an AMD GPU. If you want to take advantage of this feature, you will need all three of a Ryzen Zen 3 CPU 5000 series, a 6000 series graphics cards, the new RDNA 2 ones, and also a B550 or X570 chipset motherboard. In terms of compatibility, the B550s will accept the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs now, you just need a BIOS update if you've got older stock, but new boards should be shipping ready to run with Ryzen 5000. These CPUs have proven their worth, they're incredibly high performance, and if you're looking at getting one for a gaming build, then B550 really should be your first port of call. So what do we recommend B450 motherboards for then? If you're looking to build a budget PC, costs are a consideration, and spending less than $100 on a motherboard, then the B450 is the go-to choice. If you pair it with a Ryzen 3000 CPU, such as the 3100, 3600, or 3700X, you'll have a very strong and very good value basis for a PC. You won't miss out on the functionality of PCIe 4.0, and graphics card performance isn't limited by PCIe 3.0 at present. All in all, if you want to save that money to spend somewhere more important in the build, B450 is an excellent choice to do that. If your budget extends a little bit further and you want to build a higher performance PC, then B550 is an excellent starting point. You can use the bang up-to-date Ryzen 5000 series CPUs like the 5600X, which is incredibly high performance for gaming, or the 5950X, which is excellent for workstation tasks. Pairing these boards with the 6000 series AMD graphics card enables smart access memory technology and gives you a 5-10% to uplift in some games, and again, that's worthwhile if those are the graphics cards you're considering buying. Overall, given the feature set of B550 boards, it's actually very hard to recommend an X570 board. You should only really consider one if you're building a workstation and need the additional connectivity and features, like multiple PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives, or if you're an enthusiast or an overclocker and you want to leave every possible avenue open for upgrades in future, then X570 can be a good choice there as well. However, for an all-round gaming, general purpose, or even workstation build, the B550 motherboard is excellent, and there are even options like the Gigabyte Vision D, which includes inbuilt Thunderbolt support, which is a rare feature but very useful for content creators. Overall, we have no hesitation recommending B550 motherboards for the majority of users. We've enjoyed using our B550 mortar in our test bench machine, it's performed excellently running high-powered graphics cards, and benchmarking our Ryzen 5800X, as well as overclocking memory to find out the limits of performance there. You certainly won't feel shortchanged if you get a B550 board, and the savings in can be used in more important areas, like CPUs, graphics cards, or larger SATA drives, all of which will provide more utility than the additional functionality and expense of an X570 motherboard. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. Please like and subscribe if you have. Please stay tuned for upcoming videos, build guides, component reviews, and more on premiumbuilds.com.